company and then he studied what are the habits that, that they have. When you say habit, what do you do? It's something that you don't think anymore. Automatically you do. That's a habit, no? Habit, no? let's say in the morning when you wake up, automatic, let's say, aside from opening your eyes, habit. So, you know, your habit is to go to the top. Automatic without reading it. Yun ang sinasabi niya. Ano yung mga habit na meron tong mga successful leaders na to that they do that made the organization effective? Okay? O, ano yung una? May nakabasa na ba nito? So, the first one is, yeah. this is the sense that's why I'm asking you to do strategic. Because being proactive is really strategically making things. So, so you need you will need to anticipate, no? So the extraordinary results, yung executing resourcefulness and initiative breakthrough barriers. But you think long term. Hindi ba yung challenges? These are the barriers. But when you try to address it, dapat long term ang tingin. It cannot be the day-to-day uh, -day operational uh, matter that you look at, but you really think ahead. Okay? Parang ang tanong, eh kung kanina kinakantahan niyo si Bishop, eh paano kung si Bishop na yan retired na? Di ba? O na-assign sa iba? Sinong Bishop ang kakantahan niyo? Parehong Bishop pa rin ba? O nag-anticipate kayo? Kasi yun ang strategic planning. You really look ahead and look at alternatives. So, that's habit number one. Be proactive. Hindi, yung opposite niya, reactive. Yung kung merong problema, sagutin mo. Hindi, ito eh, malayo pa, anticipate mo na. Okay? With considering your resourcefulness and initiatives. No? Habit number two. Yan. Begin with the end in mind. What is that? So, in strategic planning, or in planning in general, you do things on the basis of? Okay. On... On the basis of begin with the end in mind, ano yung gusto niyong ma-achieve at the end, no? So, outcome-oriented mindset. Ano ba yung gusto niyong ma-achieve in the catechetical ministry? Ano yung end goal? So, you begin with that. You begin with the end in mind. What do you want to achieve? And that is based on the plans. It is anchored on the vision and mission of the church. Kaya lang ang problema natin ata is how to translate it in more, what? Concrete. Uh, something concrete, something measurable, di ba? Yun ang nagiging problema natin. Kaya when you talk about activity, engage in projects, activities, dapat lahat yun yung begin with the end in mind. Hindi pwede, bakit ba tayo nag-meeting? Hindi yun nga alam eh. For what purpose, di ba? Why are we doing this? So you always begin doing things, bearing in mind what do you want to achieve. Number three. Ayan. Mood. First things first. No? Ito na yung, ano, in simple terms, ano ba to? Prioritizing lang naman yan. Eh. Kasi sometimes we do many, yung time-wasting tendencies, di ba? Yung mga yan, Facebook ng Facebook. O ano-ano, tinitingnan. Hindi naghahanda ng homily. Hindi <laughs> marami akong makikita pa ang homily ko. Ah, diba? Isa yun ang sample mo eh, no? So, but what I'm saying, we do some other things that are not important, <coughs> diba? Yun ang we spend much time on that. Yun ang problem actually ng, ano, ng technology ngayon dito. Anyway, our children, the youth, like in kinaglame that there are millennials. I hope we also have a problem in the classroom. Kasi yung mga estudyante, they can carry that yeah, pagka nainis ka na, may Facebook ka lang. So, we confiscate all the smartphones. And then, put it sa discipline office, pag kinuha mo ron, may minor offense ka. Ganun ang ano na. So, that we penalize the students so they learn. Kasi no matter how interesting, how well you prepare, kahit ano, magaling din yung bata. Kung nga rin nakikinig sa'yo, pero actually, hawak niya yung smartphone niya, iba yung ginagawa. Ano? Kaya dito, it's very important that yung mga time wasters, eh, you put aside. Actually, may activity na ito eh, no? Yung ba, oh, time wasters ang tawag doon, no? Yung ba, tawag sa phone, 
O kaya, I don't know kung meron na nahawan na kayo sa sakit na yun. Pang yung phone na yan, hindi nyo makikang tingnan nyo from you, every minute. Parang gano'n, o kaya every hour. Yung bang parang nagpapanik kayo pag hindi nyo nakita, parang na inaiwang kayo. Di ba? Kasi nasanay, di ba? Yung bang naging, naging habit nga. Eh. Yan ang sinasabi ko. We inhabit as a habit. Parang automatic lang, di ba? O kaya, nakakonek sa bindo. Manood kayo ng The Circle. Ni Tom Hanks at saka ni, ni Watson, makikita nyo ano ang effect ng technology na yun. So, loss of privacy. Ang ganda ng issue eh. No? So, it's a basic right about privacy. But here we say, multinational company, the name is the circle. One thing to, lahat mawala ng privacy so that lahat ang ginagawa ng tao, mahal <coughs> mamomonitor muna. Ang ganda pati yung personal, pati yung sorry to sa term ko, no? pati yung pagtay, pati yung pagano. Ang ganda nga ng ano, may mapapanood kayo, pati yung, kasi willing siya na maging uh, pilot test ng company kasi gusto niya ma-promote, gusto niya kumita ng malaki. Tapos yung kanyang na tatay ay na-stroke, ang nanay niya yung nag-aalaga, una, malit lang ang sweldo niya and here is that circle. So kada niya, all-knowing, hindi niya alam, lahat ng bagay kailangan na, o baka alam ng mga tao kung anong ginawa niya, alam niya kung saan siya nagpunta. Alam niya kung ila umiyak ang tatay niya, nanay niya, kung nag-make love yung tatay at nanay niya, alam lahat. So napahiya siya, tapos yung kanyang maluwiligaw, ayaw yun. Tapos hinabol nung ano, nung, yung ano nga, yung technology na yan, yung Zoom. And then he died because they were trying to chase him but he didn't want. And everybody, so do niya realize in the need for privacy because his boyfriend wants that there should be privacy. He does not believe in total la transparency. Ang ganang pa. Tapos at the end, ah, hindi pala transparent yung CEO ng company. And then what he did, no, ang style parang job street yung presentation. No? So doon niya chinadens yung dalawang, uh, yung, dalaw yung CEO at saka si Tom Hanks, siya yung... Uh, managing director, na sila transparent, inibil nila lahat ng email nila, lahat ng personal, lahat ng ano. Eh, di hindi nakakibo kasi public eh. So, when they read it, inibisigan sila ngayon ng FBI. Yung ganun na, no, yung bang, when we lose our uh, uh, privacy, that's what I'm talking about. Eh, kasi nga, yung not important, kahit I think, no, uh, siguro mga par, I'm also suggesting to the priest, I don't know, But I think we are really affected by the social media. I think in one of your homes, kasi di ba may mga communication, talagang may problema tayo because we can no longer control our children, yung mga ano. Di ba ang daming mga crimes through this cyberspace? And I think the church, I don't know kung paano sa, pumunta sa katekismo, pero malaking problema ang social media. And we are seeing it in politics, but to what extent, di ba, yung pinapatay, nare-rate, The, the social media, and hindi mag-distinguish ng ano, I forgot the, the term, pero yung hindi totoo yung news, di ba, na nilalagay ng, depende kung sinong troller yung naglagay, di ba? But there is a problem because when children are reading it or people who are not that knowledgeable, may problema ka. But we cannot control that. Our children, pa, hindi natin makita. You can imagine that this go through the, gusto natin lahat may take ng wifi, pupunta sa probinsya, pupunta sa rural areas. Lahat pabibigin mo ng smartphone. E di bibenta nun ng kalabaw niya, tsaka ano, para mag smartphone. That's what I'm talking about. Pero yun nga, kasi I'm relating it to this because na spend yung time natin with this gadget na yung mga other things, sa nakakalimutan natin, di ba? We spend lesser time ngayon doon sa mga mamahalagang bagay. That's what I'm talking of. So, issue yun. Okay, number four. Think win-win. No? So, lead teams that are motivated to perform superbly through a shared expectation and accountability process. So, we think both ways. No? Makikinabang tayo, makikinabang. Kung baga, kung katikista ka tayo, makikinabang. Yung kinakatekais natin, makikinabang din. No? But, If we're referring to benefactors, makikinabang tayo, makikinabang din ang benefactor. Ganun ang, ang idea natin. So that's, uh, an in, ito normally sa mga deadlock eh. No? Ano bawa nga yan, pumunta ka, pinantahan mo si Bishop, sweldo naman po, ano, eh ano yung win-win situation? Di ba, with Bishop or with the parish priest? Ganun din. 
yun ay pwede lahat para sa atin. Yan ang problem ng ano, sa labor. Pag may union, ay yung union, hihingi ng malaki, tayo na wala tayo ibibigay. Pero kailangan may midway, may compromise. The next one is, oh, ito, my vocation, seek first. Oh. Sasabi ni Stephen Covey, seek first to understand, then to be understood. No? So, ibig sabihin, tayo yung umunawa muna bago tayo ang uunawain. Yun ang kumalil, yung issues and feedback. Kaya, importante listening. Diba? Ah, alam na natin yan. Alam na alam na natin yan. Synergize. Kanina ba sa team nyo, nag-synergize kayo? Magandang maganda ba yung chant nyo sa synergy? Nyo? May intro and ano, the rest, no? Yan. Yan. So, you need to synergize. And then number seven, ito yung development actually, sharpen your soul. No? It's a continuing uh, process that we try to learn new things, unlearn other things that are no longer uh, helpful to us, di ba? So yun, highest best everyone, no? and strength, passion, <coughs> capability. Kaya nung isan ata, at a certain point na ano na tayo eh, no? yung burnout, Minsan, parang ayaw na natin. But after a while, we get that energy ulit-ulit, no? Pero ito yung importante. That's why I'm presenting it to you as uh, ordained uh, people. Kasi it's about time you also look at other books. And the religious books. Kasi marami naman tayong matututunan din, di ba? Kahit yung mga sharing. I think this is also the reason why you watch telenovela, di ba? Because you can use it to your home it. Oh, maybe, di ba? Kasi it's a way of getting in touch with the people because they can identify with that one. Right? Kaya lang misan, kung sa probinsya, hindi ata, sa probinsya, may hindi ata yung NBA, hindi ko na alam kung pinangang nanalo, wag yun, sport, hindi zero. Hindi, medyo hindi yung ba. Pero kung Ginebra, di ba? Yung mga Ginebra, they can identify. What I'm simply saying is, I think on your end, marami naman, kahit naman sa pagkafe, guys, di ba? Yung kating, kailangan din mag-iisip ka ng something that you can start with them, di ba? Yung mga ganun. So, that's why the need to sharpen your soul is, uh, tapos yung, actually ito, pang second book niya na to, hindi ito, yung dalawa yung libro, ito second book, the eighth habit. Pero dito, ang ganda ng ano niya, the answer to the soul's yearning for greatness. The organization's imperative for significance and superior results and humanity search for its voice. Ang ganda niya. Magaling sumulat si, ano, si Stephen Covey na may intindihan mo. And pwede sa atin yun lang, finding the voice for me then. No? Ano yun? Napa, na, maganda. So, what I'm simply saying, maybe these are inputs that you can consider to make also your team effective. Yung seven habits other than yung yung team characteristics, no? Or maybe, suggestion ko nga, eh, misan, pwede naman yung gamitin one habit at a time for recollection, di ba? Tapos, gagamitin niyo yung, yung use it as a starting point and then related to our doctrines, di ba? Pwede rin naman na gano'n. It's up to you how you make it more simple. Pero yung essence, nandun naman. And it, it will be very helpful. So, yun yung isang concept ng team building, no? So, effective teams. Oo, uh, okay na yung effective teams. Parang nalungkot na kayo na yun. <laughs> oh, ito na, pinag-uusapan natin. Uh, pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, performance management. Kanina, yun ang mga issue nyo. Walang ganito, walang ganon. Okay, so basically, what is performance management briefly? So basically, what you want to do is your work behavior are measured and compared with established standards. Yun ang essence, ang wala na drawing ko dito, yun ang essence ng job description. Kasi yung job description nyo are your work standards. Kasi ang unang bata yan, how you will assess the performance, eh batay dun sa dapat nilang gawin. Di ba? Yun ang unang una yung bata yan. Eh pa 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 paano nyo ina-assess yung ano? yung uh, volunteer o yung katikista o yung director, you need to have certain standards. Ang suggestion ko, you're talking about for some dioceses, more advanced, no? Yung manual na for catechetical na manual, I think it is really a need for all the dioceses to have that. Eh, syempre, meron na kayong model, titignan nyo na lang ano naman yung applicable sa inyo. 
But one of the things that it should contain is really performance standards. How will you measure performance of the director, the coordinator, kung may assistant, and all the catechist? Iba-ibang description. Because that's, a, because that's a basis for what? Recognition. Basis if you want to what, uh, continue the services of the people in the catechetical ministry. No? Oh, at yung tanong, oh, ito na kanina may nag-uusap ng team tungkol dyan eh. Past performance, and then you're talking of future performance. Kasi ang performance management is you look at it, pero meron siya developmental function. Kaya sabi ko dun sa beginning, yung approach nyo cannot be administrative lang, dapat developmental. So meron future input yun, no? So, you can read it on your own, pero ang point ko, Pagka nag assess kayo ng performance, hindi pwedeng ngayon lang ang tanong saan nyo gagamitin yun in the future. Kung kausap kita, ikaw yung, ako ang bishop, ikaw yung aking, I don't know if you do it with your, uh, the priest director, that the bishop talks to you how you perform as a catechetical director, ano ang gagamitin mong items kung wala kang job description? Di ba? Nangyayari, hear say. Sabi nito. Kasi nangyayari misan, feedback lang na hindi batay doon sa ano, hindi batay doon sa job description mo. Di ba? Feedback na dito. Pwede siya sabihin as ano, but is that the basis? To what extent? Kaya ang tawag ko doon sumbungan eh. Di ba? So, nangyayari kasi, if you rely on the sumbong or the feedback, but you are not really looking at what you are supposed to do. So, dapat ang unang basis should be the expected trabaho, expected work, ano ba yung pinag-uusapan natin. Alimbawa, kanina, what do I expect from the team, from you? I expect you to answer the form individually. Lahat ba nasagot? Tingnan ko kung eh. Performance eh. Nasagot ba? Yes. Pangalawa, kinulate nyo ba? Yes. Diba? Kasi yung pangatlo, did you prepare a strategic plan? Yes. Yung pangapat na hindi na kinantan nyo ba yung strategic plan? Yes. Diba? Very clear. What I'm saying is when you set standards that are also in the... It should be measurable. It should be concrete. You lessen the bias. Because any assessment is always subjective. There is no such thing as objective assessment. Meron bang objective assessment? Wala. Well, because all of us will always have our bias when we assess. Di ba? Meron ka ng sariling pagtingin, parang kanina, sabi nyo, poor, lahat kayo poor. Di ba? There is subjectivity there. Tinanong ko lang, paano nyo nalaman poor? But one can score it 3.5, the other one can score it 3. Di ba? Kasi each one is looking at it differently. So siguro what I want you to be conscious about is, for example, what comes into the picture when you assess? Ano ba yung nagiging challenge nyo? Nag ang tanong kong una, are you evaluating the performance of the people in the ministry? Is it a practice? No. Uh, you need to institute it as a practice. I'm telling you, there should be a policy wherein the performance of all the people in the ministry should be assessed. What is the value? The value is, as, I indi as indicated, it can be for reward, it can be for promotion, transfer. Meron siyang administrative reason at meron din siya training for training purposes. No? Kanina, narinig ko sa isang team. For example, hindi, walang skills to be a catechist teacher, yung teaching, but pwede mag-assist. Diba? So, meron ba kayong teacher A? So, ngayon, ang tanong ko, kung teacher A, ano ang job description ng teacher A? Lalagyan nyo yun. Para in the future, di ba parang ganun, kung ngayon wala nung skill, but can you provide a, an opportunity wherein that person can be trained that in the future, pwede na rin siyang maging teacher catechist. That's what I'm saying. Kasi at certain point, assess, kaya importante yung assessment. And you have to tell the person, but hindi siya pwedeng katekista muna? Di ba? Ano ba sabihin mo? Kasi, eh, siyempre, nicely said. No? Misang kasi, number hurt naman sa totoo. Pwede mo mong sabihin? Kasi, kasi, nabiro lang ito. Kasi, mungo. Eh, paano kung mungo? Hindi talaga pwedeng teacher na. 
merong speech defect. Magkaiba yun, ha? Because there are volunteers who will have speech defect. So definitely, kahit may content, cannot be. Because there is a problem. Is unless, ipapagamot yung tao para mawala yung speech defect. Kasi you are to be what very clear with the person the, for the reasons why that person is being assessed that way. Yun ang importante. Kasi minsan, na-demoralize sila eh. Di ba? Kasi hindi nyo hindi explain bakit hindi siya ina-assign doon pero atatapat naman siya doon, no? Hindi nyo masabi yung totoo. Di ba? And that's important that they know it so you can do, they can do something about it. Pagka-secret, eh wala, it remains parang a mystery. Di ba? Kailangan, we have the right to know what is that reason. Pero it's said nicely. So, yun yung isa sa performance. Kaya ang tanong ko, if you are not assessing, it's about time that you develop that system of assessment, performance management. Ang ngayon, bakit wala? Kasi wala pong set standard. Kasi walang job description from the beginning. So, kailangan yung job description ita-translate into standards. Kaya nga, seven days a week ba? One hour? Yung kung ano yung performance? We had the three classes, Uh, na-ano na, rin naman ng mga ano yung volunteers, di ba? Alam naman yun. So, you are to set. So, doon ang basis. Parang tanong pa sa mga director naman, kung kayo yung director, anong basis? Nag-handle ba kayo ng annual planning workshop? Nag-prepare ba kayo ng budget? Kinausap nyo ba ang lahat ng ministry? Dito sa Delasal, no? for example lang, system. Ang chancellor, a chancellor is the highest president chancellor tapos we have the teams, no? Pero ang ano, naging system, ang chancellor can have a skip level to all of us faculty, meaning he can call for us directly to ask for feedback. Skip level ang tawag namin, no? And it's open. Meaning the kunwari, kung ang gita mo ay parish priest, hindi si bishop mag skip level sa ano, hindi natatakot si parish priest kasi alam niya that is a system that you can be doing. Skip level communication to assess performance. Why? Because it's also possible, ito yung tawag dito. Kanina, multitasking, no? When you're assessing, you can also do a multi-sourcing. Multi-source. Meaning, you have different sources of the assessment. Hindi yung kayo lang. Kasi minsan, kung ikaw lang, pwede kang bias, di ba? Lagi ko na kung nakalit ka dun sa, ano na yun, dun sa assistant na yun, o yung katikista. Ang tawag sa research nito, To make it scientific, ang tawag sa kanya, triangulation. Narinig nyo na itong word na ito. Triangulation. You triangulate assessment. Meaning, it should come from different sources. It can, it can be ikaw as the... Ito. For example, ikaw as the head. Triangulation. Ikaw as the head of the ministry. Isa. So, ang ina-assess mo, for example, is the catechist. No? So, one, one rater will be you. Another rater will be, maybe you have a head catechist. Hindi ka, ikaw kasi hindi ka directly, no? Maybe, I don't know. So, maybe you have a coordinator, no? So, coordinator. O, oh, yan. Tapos, maybe yung isa, galing mismo sa mga tao. ba? Diba? Yung mga kinakatechize mo mismo. That's a triangulation. Meron kang standard, pero you can validate yung rating na yon from the different sources. Kaya meron kang better picture kung ang talagang i-score mo 4 o 3.5. Diba? Kasi nang galing yung assessment, yan din, ewan ko kung marami sa inyo nasa parochial school, pa paas ko accreditation. Multiple, diba? So when we assess our performance in an area, meron studyante, may faculty, may administrator, may iba-iba, oo, oh, oh, may, meron triangulation. So, the, the score that you give is more, ang tawag namin doon, more reliable. Kasi nanggaling sa iba-iba. So, mga kung iba-iba, so normally, you try to look at the average, what is close, no? Kasi ang tendency kanina, ang tanong nyo, nung lahat kayo, sumagot kayo ng high, dun sa score nyo, dahil magaling ang kanta nyo, Ilocano, Visaya, Anong tawag doon sa group behavior? Pagka pare-pareho ang isip, ang tawag doon ay group faith. So it is a group behavior. Group faith. So when people think the same, 
entertain. Yeah, and they do not entertain any other ideas. It's group thing. And this is dangerous to a team when nobody says something different. Kasi kung lahat kayo yun ang pag-iisip mo, it's a group thing. It is dangerous. Why? Kasi walang bagong idea na tinatanggap. Dapat yun lang eh. So hindi nyo nakikita yung ibang perspective. So this is a dangerous behavior in a team when all of you is in a group thing. Walang iba. Is it possible to happen? Yes. In many, kanina concrete na case in point, pare-pareho, di ba? Kasi meron kayong interest na pinoprotect, baka grade natin yan, o baka, ano, o baka may price of this imam. Okay. okay, so ito yung ano, sa assessment, to lessen the subjectivity, you can do multiple crater. Ang tawag dito, triangulate through the use of multiple crater, meaning several ang assessor. No? Makikita niyo nga yung iba, di ba? How many of you have teaching, di ba yung isang buong class? ni Ray tayo, di ba? Kung natuturo din yung ibang pare. Yung buong klase, so lahat yun, kinukuha yung average. Tapos, si department chair, pupunta, access ka rin, di ba? Pwede rin yung din. Ganun din yung equivalent nito sa... Ngayon, merong tanong dyan. Kunwari, merong money involved. Money involved. Bibigyan ka ng plus 50 pesos, pag nakakuha ka ng high, kung nabila 50, malaki na. Ang tanong, among the three, sino dapat ang merong highest weight? Kasi tatlo kayong nagano, multiple sourcing head, the coordinator ng ministry, at saka yung some of those that were catechized. Sino na yung dapat merong... Wala. Pare-pareho. O oh, yan. Policy ngayon yan ng diocese, kung ano. Pero normally, in terms of principle, in terms of principle, ang may highest weight should be the immediate supervisor, the immediate superior. Yun ang may highest weight. Kasi ikaw ang nakakakita sa kanya most of the time. Hindi si Bishop. Kasi si Bishop naman, hindi siya nakikita most of the time. May weight si Bishop, pero hindi. Yun nga sinasabi ko, you don't use the position as a basis. Ang ginagaan, tinitingnan sa assessment, yung consider yung merong maraming oras na supervision nakikita mo kasi lahat baka nakikita mo yung ang gulo di ba are we clear on that ah uh, uh, ah kung magwe-wait kayo no? tapos ang tanong din hindi na ngayon kasi ang ginagamit natin one way one way assessment kung ikaw ang super superior ikaw lang na nag-assess hindi na rin ano yan, hindi na rin masyadong acceptable kasi napaka-subjective one way. Ngayon, dapat parang in that two way. <laughs> parang na kinakain mo. So it means, ikaw din meron kang self-assessment. Dapat yung sarili mo, you also are able to assess. ba? Diba? So that you can compare, syempre may subjectivity ka, ikaw yung performer, but you can compare it to the score of the supervisor or the superior, no? Yun yung another, um, another way of lessening the subjectivity. Ngayon, may isa pang tanong. Ma'am, how often? Ayan. Normally, once a year. Depende sa ano nyo, calendar year. Kung beginning of the year, January to December, o you have some, pero dapat isang taon. Yun yung this, no? Eh, kasi syempre, magpabaho. Iba yung quarterly, yung masipap na kayo nun. Ibig sabihin, the more often that you're able to do that, the better. Actually, parang sa research, the more observations that you have, the more reliable will be the result. Kung matyaga kayo, mayroong taglakad kayo yung time, yung quarterly, pwede para apat, tapos di-divide yung support. Kasi, what is the problem there? Kasi pagka once a year, may tawag kami dyan, recency effect. Kung ano yung pinaka-recent experience mo, yun ang effect mo sa grade. Di ba? Pagka yung pinaka-recent experience mo, nagalit ka sa kanya, nag-away kayo, siguraduhin mo mababa ang rating. Oo, ganun ang recency effect. O kung maganda ang interaction mo recently ngayon, maniwala ka, mataas ang grade mo. Yun ang recency effect. Yun ang problem pagka once a year lang. Unlike kasi kung more frequent, either quarterly, kaya nang matrabaho, kasi iba yung nangyari nun. So, ang ina-score mo na yung last three months. Kasi pag once a year, 
from January to December ang nalilisor mo. Sometimes yung recent lang ang remember mo. Di ba? Recency effect. Uh -oh. Yun ang problema natin doon. So, you can take that into consideration. May isa pang input na wala dyan na it might help you in performance assessment. Yung isa pa, yung mga biases that we have, no? Pagka, ay, and it comes in, no? Pa, may isang hindi lang na-express. Ano yun? Yung mga bias when you are rating. Nasa palagay nyo, merong bias. Meron sa atin, ang tawag doon, halo effect. Halo. Ano yun, halo? So, practically, Mabait ka. Talagang people are basically good. So, you will score them high. Halo effect. Yun ang assumption mo sa mga katikista, sa mga tao. Kaya ang tendency mo, laging high ang score. Halo effect. Okay. Ang tawag ko naman doon sa isa, ako na may ano nun, kasi halo na devil effect. Ano yun? Ang assumption, kasi ano yan eh, theory ng X and Y ni Max Greg, ni, ni Gregor. No? Kasi siya, yung people that who are X, yung basically irresponsible tamad. Kaya ang score mo mababa. Yung why basically responsible. Yun yung halo effect. Galing yan sa particular framework. So may mga tao naman, ang assumption mo, mga tamad. Yung mga tao, kaya ang tendency mo, mababa ang score. Uh -huh. Yung isa naman, ang tawag doon ay central tendency effect. Ano yun? To play safe, laging average ang bibigay mong score. Para hindi magagalit sa'yo. Ah. Uh -huh. Pwede rin yung gano'n, di ba? Puro average lang para hindi magalit per se. But that's again, meron siya yung dalawang extreme at saka sa gitna, meron yung siyempre effect. Yun yung sinasabi kong bias that can come into the picture when you rate, no? O yung isa. Meron pang isa naman. Yung tawag by nature, ikaw, no, tayo as a rater, kuripot. Yung by nature, yung ano, kuripot kang magbigay ng grade, no? ang tawag doon, yung by nature. Oo. Oo, oh, ba, ano ba tawag niya sa, ano ba tawag sa bisaya ng kuripot? Meaning you're stingy. You, you tend to give only low grades. No? Para sa'yo, ay sorry, yung 1 mataas ng grade, yung 1.5 mataas na. Oo. Oh, Oo, oh, ayan. Meron, oo, oh, meron ganon. Okay. Di ba misa may ganon? Di ba parang sa mga teacher, itong teacher na to, mataas na yung 1.5 sabi niya, yung taas na as na yan. Yung isa naman, yung isa extreme naman nun, very generous. Sa kanya naman, hindi basically good kung hindi, generous lang talaga siya magbigay ng grade. Ganun lang. So again, bias siya kasi hindi mo ginagamit objectively yung standards mo. Yan. Ah, ito, ah, yung isa generous, yung isa kasi in, stingy effect. Ito, stingy. Uh, yung isa naman generous, no? over generous ka naman. Bigay ng, eh, yung isa naman, similar to me, may problem ka niya. Malaking, malaking ego niya nito. If you are not like me, you will not score high. Wow. Ah, similar to me. Di ba, meron ganun yung mga nag-a-assess, mataas ang, malaking ego na, pag gambling ko sa hindi ka kasi galing ko, hindi mo ka mukha, hindi ka makakakuha ng score na mataas. Yun yung isa. Di ba? Pwedeng pang-effect. 